The defending champs have some work to do because their offensive line is in shambles. The Pac-12 reminds us why USC wants the F out. And Nick Young wants you to believe that he didn't get knocked the F out. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It's September 13th, 2022. I'm in a tremendous mood. The Dodgers have clinched for the playoffs now. For real. There was a weird error by Major League Baseball. We'll get to it in a minute. It totally doesn't matter. If you like the content that we put out about LA Sports, clickety-clack the like button. Clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist and yes, Comment, I'm here to make friends. I'm not here to be an influencer. I'm too bald. Now, before we go through uh, the news and notes from around LA, we'll take a quick look at the scoreboard. The Dodgers did find out that there was an, uh, that there was an error in the Major League Baseball offices. They didn't qualify for the playoffs yet. The Dodgers yawned, then they went out on the field, beat the hell out of Arizona 6-0. Mookie Betts hit his 34th home run of the year. That's a career high for him. Meanwhile, today, the Dodgers can clinch the NL West. They can do it by either defeating Arizona. That game starts tonight at 640. It's Clayton Kershaw, 7-3. Merrill Kelly, 12-5. Decent pitching matchup. So the Dodgers can clinch with either them winning a game or the Padres losing a game. Meanwhile, MLS has thrown a curveball into its schedule with Tuesday night matches. LAFC is in Minnesota United tonight at 5. The Black and Gold are a mess. They've lost four of their last five. So, <laughs> we Rams fans, we like Matthew Stafford. We like that he finally had some talent around him on offense. But if you're sitting there going, what the hell happened? How is he still standing after he got sacked seven times by the Buffalo Bills on Thursday? Keep in mind, he's had an even tougher time. He came from Detroit where he got sacked once 10 times in a game. So no, he's a tough hombre. And he might have to be one all over again. Here's the problem for the Rams. Uh, their center, Brian Allen, he basically went straight from the locker room to the emergency room after the game on Thursday. Surgery to his knee on Friday. We don't know how long he's going to be out. As a result, the Rams have shifted Coleman Shelton from right guard to center, and Tremaine uh, Ankrum will get his first start at right guard. But wait, there's more. Left tackle Joe Noteboom sprained his ligament, and that's a problem. Because if he misses a game, they don't know yet, but if he misses that game, Alaric Jackson steps in. So the point I'm getting at, two starting offensive linemen could be out. One definitely, two possibly when the Rams played the Atlanta Falcons. By the way, the Rams have tumbled in power rankings for most major media outlets. ESPN, they only had them slipping to five. CBS had them dropping to 10th. And The Athletic had them dropping all the way to 19th. They did not look good on Thursday and the rankings show it. Oregon State is also disappointed that their September 24th game against USC was stolen by the Pac-12 network. And they're putting it at 6.30 p.m. too, a night game, exactly why the USC Trojans were like, we're sick of these bleeping night games where nobody on the East Coast can see us. The Pac-12 network was created basically to piss us all off, right? And Oregon State, they're not happy about it either. You might sit there and go, well, wait, it's Oregon State. No, Oregon State is 2-0. and Now, they don't necessarily know that they're going to beat the Trojans, but they're competitors. They want to see. And even if they don't beat USC, they want people to actually have a chance, recruits, I might add, to actually sit there and go, hey, wait, maybe I do want to go to Oregon State. So, yeah, if you're wondering why SC why UCLA and why other schools are now rumored to be leaving the Pac-12, the Pac-12 network is why. Nobody knows where it is. 
Nobody knows. I have direct TV. I don't get it no matter what I do. And by the way, if you're wondering how many times is this little pissant little thing with an audience smaller than MSNBC going to figure out, going to, going to ruin everything for us, they're contractually allowed to take three USC football games a year. Rice, Oregon State, one more. And you can be damn sure that Fox and ESPN are doing everything in their power not to get, let, let them have the third. So anybody who covered USC football for the last decade would tell you two things about Clay Helton. One, swell guy, just a swell guy. And the second, can't coach USC. Terrible, he had no business coaching USC, he had to leave, get out of USC. But again, nice guy. He has been texting USC athletic director Mike Bone and they've been cordial and things, they never got bitter, and things have gotten to the point where they're getting chummy, including Helton texting Mike Bone after the Stanford win, heaping nothing but praise on the team he used to coach. And Helton landed on his feet at Georgia Southern. So Bone texted back, really proud of you, exclamation point, because Georgia Southern had just upset Nebraska. Now the writer didn't go into any further because the bromance started to sound a little bit too creepy for us all. Yeah, we don't need to know. We really don't want to know. So, former Laker Nick Young had his boxing match on Saturday. And it pretty much went as well as his time with the Lakers. Put it this way. He's arguing with everybody on Twitter over whether or not he got knocked out. Dude, if you have to go through the tape frame by frame over whether or not you got knocked out in a boxing match, you don't belong in a boxing ring, okay? Hang up the mitts, it's over. Everybody wants their glory. Every man wants to see how it would be to be in a boxing ring. So I totally get that part. But the one thing boxing doesn't need is flopping, okay? That was you on your back. I don't want to go through the thing frame by frame. That was you on your back. We don't draw the charge in boxing. We don't flop in boxing. Rex Chapman is not putting up your tape asking block or charge. It's not happening. And by the way, <laughs> if you have a descending belly, you also don't belong in a boxing ring, dude. I have a descending belly now. Well, it's not descending. I have a bit of a stomach now. I'm 54. You don't see me strapping on the gloves and playing got to fly now as I take a walker down to the ring. I get it. It's not my time anymore. We realize you like double doubles more than you did when you were younger. Your gut says no moss. Hang up the boxing ring. The boxing gloves. Nick Young. Major League Baseball goofed. The Dodgers didn't clinch a playoff berth Sunday. Now, Major League Baseball, they, um, they failed to go through all the scenarios. There was a scenario yesterday where theoretically the Padres could overtake Los Angeles for the NL West, which meant the Dodgers could have finished in a three-way tie with Milwaukee and St. Louis. Milwaukee, therefore, would win the NL Central. St. Louis would get the tiebreaker, and as a result, the Dodgers would have missed the playoffs. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. But I want to thank the idiots at MLB for uh, letting that one stretch out for another day. By the way, Freddie Freeman, he was named NL Player of the Week. And in that lengthy Dodger injury update... Bruce Dark Greater All scheduled to pitch another bullpen session Wednesday. He could be activated as early as Friday. Relief pitchers Victor Gonzalez and Danny Duffy, their rehabs have been stopped. For Gonzalez, it's fatigue. For Duffy, honestly, it just isn't working. He's not getting any healthier. Tommy Conley could be activated any day now. Also, Tony Gonsolin threw another bullpen, will throw another bullpen session on Wednesday. And Kevin Pillar, you might recall, they thought his season was over. He blasted out his shoulder. He had surgery. 
Uh, he's in Oklahoma City now on a rehab assignment. So there is a possibility for the guy. We mentioned earlier how the chart, uh, the Rams had fallen in the power rankings for most major media outlets. The Chargers are going in reverse. They are on the rise. The Athletic and ESPN both think the Chargers are legit Super Bowl contenders and have them ranked at number four, as does CBS, but they rank them only as high as number five. The Chargers also made a minor roster adjustment. They have added Christian Covington to the defensive line. He's familiar with the way the Bolts run things. He played 16 games for him last year. Weird thing over at UCLA, Dorian Thompson Robinson was allegedly pulled from the game on Saturday. They were claim, claiming he was injured. He says he wasn't. Basically what UCLA was trying to do was give the guy a rest at, or not risk anything. After all, they were going to win. It was a clearly inferior opponent and they didn't want him to out for Pac-12 play. It's Alabama State for Pete's sakes. For his part, Thompson Robinson said the competitor in him was a little frustrated, but he likes backup. Uh, he, he liked the backup, Ethan Garbers, so he wanted to make sure the guy got some playing time. UC Regents, though, more importantly, they have placed something new on their agenda. UCLA moving to the Big Ten Conference. It's going to be held at a closed door session on September 22nd. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I still think that this whole deal is all about the uh, state of California trying to get some money out of UCLA. I don't think they care a whit whether or not they leave the Pac-12. CBS Sports, by the way, you've heard of the top 25. CBSSports.com goes a little further. They rank every single team in the country. UCLA is currently at 42. They have dropped three spots despite going 2-0, and and that's because of, obviously, the weakness of schedule. Oh, uh, one thing I also wanted to get out of the way. We've been talking about this lousy website called Hoops Hype. Hoops Hype is claiming that the Clippers are this close to becoming more popular than the Lakers. Oh, really? Then why did Paul George get booed out of the building when he showed up at the Chargers game on Sunday? I mean, this always this cracks me up it's about the Chargers, about the, uh, the, the, the Clippers and the Chargers. You think the Clippers are going to be more popular than the Lakers. They're not even the most popular team that L.A. stole from San Diego. These guys are the more popular team that L.A. stole from San Diego. And oh, by the way, the Chargers, uh, the, the Clippers had a 38-year head start to try to make a positive impact on L.A. Hasn't happened. Hoops hype. Bunch of idiots. Now, if you enjoyed today's uh, content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We do talk LA sports here. I'm James. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Porta El Queso production. Take care.